Okay, I'm gonna show you quickly how to rebuild an ASCO valve. This is the power head. There's an electromagnet in here. This is a little retainer clip. I usually use a little micro screwdriver to pop that off, just like that. And then this little metal plate is actually put on there. It's a little bit difficult sometimes, but generally you can just pop them off like that. If you look at it, it actually slides down and snaps into place. And, and this, this metal plate, this metal plate is what holds the electromagnet into place. So there's actually a little bit of a spring action that you push down and then you would slide that clip over into place. When you pull the electromagnet or the power head off, you're left with a little spring on the top of that solenoid, right? You pull that off. I like to set things in the order that they came off just as a helper to help you put it all back together. Now you can break over and open up this solenoid uh, and actually pull that off the power head. Um, if you're going to rebuild these, they come with a kit that usually comes with the solenoid and the piston inside and the, the gasket and there's usually an O-ring. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to find the right socket for this. Uh, nope. I think that's it. Yep. Simple socket set. I'm gonna use a small little extension here. Put that sucker together. Just like so. So this may not be the exact solenoid that you have, um, but this will give you a rough idea. The kit should come with new, they usually come with um, new bolts, and these bolts actually have lock washers on them, uh, built in usually. You can use an impact wrench to break these off. Depending on how old the solenoid is, you might shear them off. So it's usually safer just to do it by hand. Usually I will use a tool to get them started, um, but I'll go around and tighten them back on just like you would, you know, go crisscross uh, to tighten the gasket back down on. So pull the four screw, four bolts off and the whole thing will come apart like this, but you want to pay real close attention to how these things are taken apart. You see how there's a gasket on there? And see how the metal part is pointing up? Don't take that off yet. Inside the solenoid, you can see we've got a little piston in here and it's held in place by a little spring, right? Sometimes this uh, piston actually has other components that are built into it. So you wanna pay real close attention to how that comes out. The seal is made, there's a rubber gasket on the end of that so I'm gonna leave that like it is. Then this diaphragm actually comes off and you can see how when this is pressed down, there's a seal made around this, this brass, um, I don't even know what to call that, little flange right there. So that goes on it like that. I've had other people install these upside down like that. And of course there's nothing to make a seal, it's just metal on metal. The, the, the proper way to install these is this plate is sticking out and the, and the solenoid piston comes into contact with that little port right there. So this comes off like so, and then there's an O-ring right here. Now, because these solenoids are designed to hold back pressure, um, it, whether it's a water valve, some sort of pneumatic system, or some sort of water valve assembly, whatever it is, make sure you turn the liquid nitrogen off, turn the water off, turn the oil off, whatever it is, shut it off, before you pull this apart, because otherwise it's gonna come gushing out with this, this solenoid. All right, so we're gonna put this back together like so. Note that the O-ring, usually an O-ring comes with a kit. This will come with a rebuild kit. And I'm gonna set that down. This little piston and the spring will come with a kit. And if I had a one inch socket in here with me, I'd show you, you can break this apart um, if you break this apart, just, just counterclockwise, um, you can break this apart and there's actually an O-ring in here that's replaceable as well. And that, that O-ring in between the solenoid and the brass housing, that O-ring um, comes with the kit as well. So I'm gonna put this back together. We're gonna close it up, kind of line everything up and we'll get the, the bolts started. Just get them hand tight. 
notice that the solenoid, if you're replacing the whole brass body, which people don't usually do, they just buy a rebuild kit, but if you're gonna replace the whole brass body, note there's an in and there's an out. All right, so put that back in there. Just get it started. And you wanna make sure that your O-ring doesn't pop out of the little groove that's setting in and that that rubber gasket stays in place. And you don't have to like put 2,000 uh, pounds of torque on these to, to tighten them up. Obviously they gotta be more than finger tight, but I'll show you how to do this. So we're getting these hand tight. Now we're gonna adjust our socket so that it, so, so look, I'm just gonna tighten them up a little bit at a time, going crisscross, just gonna start snugging it up. We go crossways here so that our gasket seals properly. Now I'm gonna start tightening it a little more, and a little more, a little more, till we can, basically we're snugged up and then you can work your way around in a clockwise or counterclockwise. So, so now we've got this assembled. That's gonna hold water. That's gonna hold back pressure. We're gonna put our spring back on there and then we're gonna put our power head. Note, see how the back side of this power head has kind of a groove where it'll set over the socket there? See all that? This goes over like that and you're left with a little lip right there. Your plate, notice the size of this plate. I've seen people wrestle with this before. It's not a big deal. The small part of the plate goes up here and when you depress, when you compress that spring, this little plate slides right into that groove. If you get it backwards, which I've seen people do many times and they wrestle and fight these things, if you get it backwards where you got the big side on there and you try to push it over, it's, it's not gonna lock into place properly. So you want to use a small side of that groove over it like that and then snap it into place just like that and it's not coming off and this is just a little retainer clip it just pops right on and that's how you rebuild one of these things stop